and welcome to the start of another week in my classroom. So I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna pass it out to my team. I left a yellow folder with all my sub plans. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the start of another week in my classroom. Today is Monday, and it is a teacher planning day. So I am here today working in my classroom without students, which is great because I have a couple of things to get done today. Before coming into the classroom this morning, I stopped by my local supermarket, Publix, to grab some food for today. I grabbed some stuffed potato balls with chicken from Publix, and I also tried to choose a salad, but I wasn't really liking some of the options they had especially the one they had on sale so I decided to opt for a protein bowl instead and I also grabbed a chicken pasta salad just in case I have the munchies after school or my son's girlfriend will be coming in later he is not in school today but she goes to the university so she'll be stopping by my classroom today so if she'd like it she can have it I also picked up some chicken and wild rice soup that I saw that looked just yummy so I can have soup and salad for lunch and I also have with me my tea which I have in my cup right here with this cute little cozy that I got from Etsy. But anyway, I'm gonna get my day started. I am gonna put on some makeup because later on after school, once my contract hours are done, I'm gonna film some videos. So yeah, a couple of things to do today. I also went ahead and I created a to-do list on the board of 10 things that I would like to accomplish today. But then I went ahead and afterwards at the end, I put some exclamation marks so that I target those things first those are the five things that I really want to target today so yeah let me show you again that list so here's the list on the board and as you can see the exclamation marks are things that I really want to do today and then if I have time I can tackle everything else on this list. This is a short instructional week for me. I'm only gonna be with the students tomorrow and Wednesday. On Thursday and Friday, I am taking two personal days, which I'll probably talk to you more about later. But anywho, I am going to get my day started by eating my breakfast, drinking my warm tea, and answering emails and getting my day started. So I will take you along with me on my planning day today, and let's see what we end up accomplishing. I worked for about an hour trying to figure out this sitting arrangement because just finding a creative way to set up 25 desks in the classroom is a little interesting because I also have to see where I'm putting their three door carts where they store their chair pockets and notebooks, where I'm gonna put the crates where they put the lunch boxes, where am I going to have the students stack their chairs. But all in all, I ended up going with a double E. One E is bigger than the other, but that's the way we're gonna work it. And because my green team had to kind of be split up, I ended up making green team just a four student group. And then blue team is a six student group because they're like separated. I mean, if you have any suggestions on how I can improve this, I'll be more than happy to listen to you all because I liked having even groups. I have 25 desks, I have five groups. Five groups of five students worked great, but I could potentially still have that. It's just that green team will be split up because right now one person will be a little bit off, but I, I guess that doesn't matter. Anyway, this is how it looks. So as you can see, this is one of the E's and this is the E that's bigger because I have three desks going on these rows and only two going on these rows, but that's just how it works with 25 desks. I'm not gonna have an even amount. And yeah, 
that's how it looks. I decided to put their crates for their lunch boxes here. And I had to put the green cart here because the other ones are off on the ends, which are over here and also over here. And I decided to stack the chairs here. This is where the students will put them at the end of the day. Obviously, they'll have to wait for the students to get up from their desk so that they can stack their chairs, which is fine. And in the morning, whoever comes first will start to distribute the chairs to the other desk so that these people can access their desk and so forth. We'll make it work. But this is how the setup is. I like that everyone has a clear view to the front. And I also set up our couch over here. So we have more space over here in front of the stage. So yeah, that's how the new seating arrangement looks. And now on to the next item in my to-do list. One of the custodians just came in and told me they're going to vacuum my carpet, which is awesome. So I decided to just take all the cushions out so that they just have the space free to go. So I put our floor seats over here by the stage. I moved the little Ikea table on the side, put the Trite Wizard cup on top of that crate, put Barry our bear here and all these cushions here and here. I'm stacking the wobble cushions there because I need to take them home so that I can inflate them with a needle pump, which I have at home. All right, so let me get back to lesson planning and show you my process. So I teach five subjects and our district gives us these pacing guides. I have four pacing guides here because our language arts and reading pacing guide contains both reading and language arts. So that's two subjects right here. And this is our math pacing guide, our science pacing guide, and our social studies pacing guide. These pacing guides are published for every two weeks or sometimes the dates differ based on the subject. But for example, ELA, this is a two week cycle, is 10 days. And this is weeks six through seven. Right now we're starting week seven and this is where we need to be, which is Wonders Unit 1, week three. And our language arts and reading is all embedded within here. We're looking at natural disasters. So that's what we're gonna be going over. And they delineate the language arts standards, the writing standards, and what we need to do out of wonders and how we're going to address the objectives for writing. So this is a very lengthy document. Here's our prompt, we're doing informative essay. So it tells us like, for example, you saw this page over here. It goes day by day as to what we're supposed to do, which over here. So these are the different days and so forth. So that's language arts and this is math, goes over the standards, the essential content and the objectives. And then it tells us our prerequisite standards for this chapter and then how we're going to go along and use our Go Math. Sometimes, as you can see, we skip lessons because our Go Math is written for Common Core, not for Florida Standards. So we have to make sure that we look at our teacher notes as well and make sure that we address the Florida Standards that our students will be tested in. And there's the summer technology integration, which is in every single pacing guide. Here is the science one. We use the Pearson Elevate Science Book. And this is basically how our pacing guides look. They're very lengthy pages. This is our social studies, which is our TCI curriculum, Teachers Curriculum Institute. And yeah, this is basically what our pacing guides look like. And what I like to do is I take all of these and I condense it into my instructional focus so that I know during the two week period what I'm addressing with each subject. And these are the dates for the reading, but then I go ahead and I put the dates for math, science, and social studies. So this was weeks one, two, and three. This is weeks four and five. And then this is where we are right now. And I am behind in science and in social studies. So I haven't started this lesson yet. I was supposed to start it almost two weeks ago. Yeah, two weeks, no, actually last week. But I'm still wrapping up on the moon faces, which was last week, as you can see over here. So I'm just gonna wrap up that topic before starting this one. And I'm really behind in social studies. I'm supposed to be starting chapter three as of last week. I have yet to finish chapter one because of the different changes in the schedule and things like that and other things that happen. So I'm going to really focus on staying where I'm supposed to be in ELA and math and trying to catch up on science and social studies. 
So I do have my pacing guides here. For social studies, we don't really have a hardcover or hard copy of a pacing guide. So I went ahead and I just printed the lesson guide for chapter two, which is regions of the United States. And here's the lesson guide for chapter three, which is the effects of the geography and life in the Southeast. So we have that for social studies. This is my math pacing guide for chapter three, which we're starting. And this is my wonders pacing guide for unit one. And I just have to find week three. And this is my science teacher edition. Did I say pacing guide? Oh my goodness. My teacher edition for wonders, my teacher edition for go math. This is what I'm talking about, people. I'm a little tired. But yeah, this is my teacher edition for science. This is Pearson Elevate Science and what we'll be doing in here. So I have all of these materials to help me plan for the week. Now again, since I'm not gonna be here Thursday and Friday, much of my instruction will be these next two days. So tomorrow and Wednesday, I'm gonna try my best to wrap up science, wrap up social studies, and try to get us as caught up as possible. I'm not gonna be able to get too much caught up because I'm not gonna be here, but next week I will make sure that I stay on top of what I do need to get caught up on in science and social studies. So let me go ahead and plan away and uh, let me show you my lesson plan template as well. So I like to type my lesson plans and I created this digital template. This is for language arts and reading. So here are the reading standards and the weekly focus. And I have them by clusters according to how the students are tested on our Florida standards assessment. And then I start with the opening routine. I go over what we're gonna do in reading, what we're gonna do in language arts and writing, and then the vocabulary or spelling words for the week and the home learning. I have to switch this because this was last week for spelling. We're gonna do vocabulary this week. And yeah, so this is how the reading template looks like. And the math, science, and social studies template is very similar. It just has the instructional focus by domains, bodies of knowledge, or strands. So in math, we use domains. In science, we use bodies of knowledge, and in social studies, we use strands. And again, it goes over my gifted objectives, my materials, what I'm doing in math, what I'm doing in science, and what I'm doing in social studies. These grayed out boxes mean that I don't teach that subject that day, and then I put the essential vocabulary down here and the home learning. So that's pretty much my lesson plan template. Now I'm going to fill it up for this week and show you my results. I just finished lesson planning and writing my sub plans for Thursday and Friday of this week. It's been a productive, I wanna say probably two hours. It's 12.45 right now. And I haven't even taken a break to eat lunch. So I'm gonna eat lunch now. Let me show you the end results. So here is my lesson plan template for reading and language arts. This is our focus text. And over here are all of our activities including the activities that the students will do during the sub days when I'm not here. Here are vocabulary words and the homework for the week. And then on the back, I have math, science, and social studies, all the activities that I'm going to be working with them this week, tomorrow and Wednesday, and what I left for the sub plans for the rest of the week, along with the homework. Because I'm not gonna be here on Friday, I'm telling the students to turn in their homework next week monday instead of friday i usually assign my homework at the beginning of the week and then it's due at the end of the week here are my sub plans this is for thursday and this is for friday basically it is a breakdown of the entire day and all the activities that the students need to oh i just realized something did i do that on both no i just did it on this one i didn't staple this correctly hold on let me fix it right away there we go, much better. So yeah, this is the start of the day and it just gives you a rundown or gives the sub a rundown of all the things and activities that the students will be doing throughout the day along with our schedule and the behavior management, which is the sub just has to draw stars in the night sky. 
10 stars gives the whole class a reward and then they can signal any students give little student shout outs i gave an example here and then on the back they can write a comment on how their day went and students who followed the rules or did not follow the rules here is the breakdown for friday same thing with the breakdown of all the activities and the behavior and the comment form so that is my sub plans or those are sorry my sub plans for the week and my lesson plans for the week as well and now i have all these papers to make copies of for not just the sub days but also the lessons that i planned for tomorrow and wednesday all right so time to cross off and check off two more things on our to-do list And check out my rug the custodian came and she vacuumed the entire rug so now I'm just gonna put the things back on the rug and here it is the classroom library area all set up I'm not sure what to do with all these pillows now that we have the floor seats and like I said, the wobble cushions will also be part of the classroom library area, but I have to take those home. So I could potentially just put them at the perimeter of the bookshelves, but that's how they are. And I forgot to mention earlier, when you saw me set up the classroom desk, what I did on the sticky notes was place the students' names on them so they know where their desks are tomorrow, but they will be moved. So I'm going to use a seating chart, a new one, and then have the students sit in their new seating places and let them know that tomorrow so they can move their stuff. All right, I'm going to take a lunch break, eat very quickly. After lunch, I'm gonna work on making the copies for the week and then I'll do the positive bump up email and maybe start tackling some of the other things on my list if I'm able to. So I realized I made an ambitious list, but here we go. Ready to eat my protein bowl, my soup, I also have an applesauce pouch for dessert. I put this balsamic vinaigrette that I love from Annie's. It's so good. And I also have some water right here and some to replenish it. So bon appetit. Time to make some copies so that we can now cross off another item from our to-do list for today. And then the last thing would be that email that I wanted to send. And at least I would have accomplished half of the list, which is five things, my five top things from that list. And then everything else, I'm going to have to find a way to embed it within my time this week, probably tomorrow, since Wednesday I don't really have a planning time. So unless I just work on a couple of things when I get in in the morning, because I do come an hour before my contract time. So let's get these copies done. As you can see right this ginormous stack of papers copies for the week are done with the exception of these two little papers that stayed in my printer because they're the last two little bits of things that I did before I walked downstairs but no worries this is for sub days so I'll just either copy them on my way out or copy them tomorrow morning one or the other. Oh, and I'm so glad I didn't copy them because I forgot to change this. This is supposed to say political scientists and historians. Okay, good thing I didn't take it with me. I gotta make that change, but I'll get it copied tomorrow so that it's ready to go for Thursday and Friday. All right, for completing my top four things, now I'm gonna do my top five which is to send that positive bump up email. 
positive bump ups are a way for me to ask teachers to send me any shout outs that they want to give to other staff members for something positive that they saw or somebody going out of their way to help someone else. And I've had at least three people come up to me and ask me if I was going to continue that this year. That announcement was just to let us know that in about 45 minutes, they're closing the school, which is okay by me because I'm almost done with my top five things. And the other five things, I can either, like I said, do it later this week or next week we have another teacher planning day in the middle of the week. I can also scoot things over to next week and that is just a normal dismissal bell. But anyway, like I was saying, the positive bump ups are to kind of boost staff morale. And I send the email out in the middle of the week, which is Wednesday. So I'm going to send the email out today and hopefully I will get a couple of people to send me some shout outs that they want to include in this week's positive bump up email. And I will send that email out on Wednesday just to cheer everybody up and they can read all the great things that are happening in school. So I'm going to do that right now. I just finished writing my positive bump ups email and just to share this with you this is the article that I read back in 2017 and this is exactly when I started doing this in my school and I'll link this article down below so that you can learn a little bit more about what are positive bump ups or bump ups which they mentioned in the article they called it hump day bump we call it positive bump up Wednesdays so all this information is here in case you want to also try it at your school And with that, I feel so productive looking at this list. Yes, I was very ambitious writing 10 things down, especially since some of these things will probably take like half of a full teacher planning day, but I accomplished the most that I wanted to accomplish today, my top five out of this 10 things on this list, but I feel great. All right, so I didn't get my makeup on. I thought I was going to have more time to maybe shoot a video or two, but... Right now, my contract hours are done, but they're kicking us out in 20 minutes. So there's not much I can do. So I'll just try and film tomorrow, probably after school, so that I can get these videos up and going. A couple of them are for, a well, one is for a collab, and another one is for the Educators to Educators membership site. And yeah, was that two? Or I wanted to film three? No, I think that was two. Oh, and then I wanted to do the reaction to my video, which I haven't been able to do another time. I'm going to now move us on to Tuesday. Good morning and welcome to Tuesday. So it's just about time to get our day started and I actually rearranged the pillows on the classroom library area when I came in this morning because yesterday I wasn't digging how they were looking a little bit too cluttered around the floor seats. So, and I also took the wobble cushions home and I filled them up and this is how they look. So I'm storing these three right here in this felt organizer from five below. And then I put one there and the three floor seats here and then the cushions along the perimeter of the bookshelves. All right, so that is what I did. Let's see what the kids think of it today and I'll let you know how our day goes. See you later. The students are now in music. We had a really good math lesson this morning going over what we have previously learned in chapters one and two. And I introduced chapter three. We worked on some of the problems. We were doing this kind of math on the board. The students are basically working on multiplying a two digit number by a multiple of 10. So I was showing them how they can use basic facts and also if they're not sure, they can use the area model. So that's what we were going over this morning. I feel pretty good with how this lesson went. Of course, I'm gonna give them practice. They also have the practice to do for homework tonight. And again, their homework is not gonna be due until next week, Monday when I return. And right now I'm putting together a little gift for my grade level and I wanted to show you what that is. Fancy Nancy in fifth on Instagram has a daughter. Her name is Megan and her IG is Prince by Meg. And she does these cute little illustrations and she was doing personal ones using your Enneagram and other things. But she was also doing some team photos. So I went ahead and I purchased one and I sent her a photo with all of us wearing our fourth grade crew shirts. And look what an adorable job she did. I got these printed in Walgreens. 
I used a 50% off coupon and I printed these in five by seven or seven by five. And I have these acrylic frames that I got from Dollar Tree for only a dollar. So I'm going to put them in here and give it to my grade level team today. Just look how adorable this looks now in the frame. It's just perfect. Oh my goodness. I can't wait. So I'm going to go around and I'm going to pass it out to my team and make their day a little bit sunnier. So cute. So here's the rest of them. There's five of them. I did keep one for myself. So let me go around and pass them out. Just finished passing out all the little pictures to my great little team. And it was so nice to see how they just lit up with a smile and they were so appreciative. They absolutely loved it. They're like, oh my God, this is so adorable. So I'll leave a link down below to Meg's Instagram so that you can check her out. And I also will link her Etsy store, which is where she sells the prints. Just know that she's also a college student. So the turnaround time may take a little bit. Just be patient and she'll get back to you. She's the sweetest. And Fancy Nancy in fifth is amazing. She's an amazing fifth grade teacher in California. All right, so actually, let me see if Miss Guzman is available. So maybe we can get her to give us a little bit of a reaction. Let's see. It's Miss Guzman. Hi. <laughs> I know it's been such a long time. I know I haven't been <laughs> in her room for a while, but if you remember, this is her room. Look how adorable, still very colorful, very print rich. Oh my God, I love that you can do hard things. And she's like working with her DI groups and check this her out. This is so cute, <laughs> I love it. What, what was her name? Meg, Prince Meg. by Meg on Instagram. I love it. I love it. You are amazing. Aww. And keep doing what you're doing because yes. you bring a smile to all of us. You brought a smile to all of us. Yes, you did. Thank you, Meg. I mean, I hope you watch this at some point. I'll tag her in the little trailer that I put on my Instagram so she can kind of watch this. I have to put a timestamp so she knows when to watch. But yeah, everybody has pretty much been giving the same reaction as Aureli. <laughs> it's so cute. So it like brings a little smile to your face, like a big smile, cheesy smile. Yeah. All right, back to doing all the stuff. It's the end of the day and we had a pretty productive day. All the students were able to present their artifacts for the social scientists, so we're done with that. We also went ahead and started our Wonders Unit 1 Week 3 with the natural disasters. We had some really nice conversations. Backing up a little bit, you also saw the students do the social scientists sort. They actually had a good time with that as well and had a really good review. So tomorrow they'll do a last minute review. They'll take the test and we'll be done with chapter one so that we can try to catch up with our social studies since we're supposed to have started chapter three already but it's all good, it's gonna be fine. All right, so right now I'm actually gonna head on over to the dentist because last week I went for the second part of my root canal and it was Thursday when I went and we're now on Tuesday and this side of my mouth still hurts, it's sensitive. I just called the dentist's office and they told me to head on over right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So now I'm going to move us on to Wednesday. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Wednesday. So this is the last day that I will be with students this week. I will take you right along with us and show you the different things or highlights that we end up doing today. We also have a faculty meeting after school, and I will also be leaving all the sub plans organized and ready to go on top of my desk for each day tomorrow, Thursday and Friday that I will not be here. All right, so let me get a couple of things going this morning before the kiddos arrive and I will check in with you later. everyone it is now the way past the end of the day actually I've been doing a lot of preparations for various other things and I just left all my sub plans ready on my desk 
So the highlights for the rest of the day were, we were working with partial products and using area models in math. I actually gave the students a graph paper and they were drawing the area models using the graph paper and coloring in each box with the partial products. So that was really good, good visual for my visual learners. This morning we were reading in our Wonders Unit 1 Week 3, we read about a world of change where it talked about weathering, erosion, and deposition on the board. I wrote it down and I kind of did the hand movements where I show them that weathering breaks it, erosion moves it, deposition drops it. And we also were looking at keywords that show us the text structure of compare and contrast. So anytime we were reading something that was similar or they were contrasting something, we wrote the keywords down on the board as well. So the students are reading the text catching those clues that let them know what the text structure is, the overall text structure. And then in the afternoon, we went ahead and used our star finders for the last time to do a little science investigation, doing observations on how the constellations in the night sky, the patterns in the night sky, seem to change as the times change during the day and also during the year. And of course, the students were able to connect that it's not the stars that are moving, but it's actually the earth rotating on its axis and revolving around the sun. So let me show you really quickly what my desk looks like. I left a yellow folder with all my sub plans and all the papers that the students are going to use tomorrow. And I also left another folder here off to the side in blue so that the sub knows what are the plans that go with Friday and all the work that goes with those plans as well. And that's my little print right there. My desk is so adorable. All right, so that's basically all I have for you for this week. I know it's just a three-day vlog, but my week is very short because tomorrow I am getting on a plane early in the morning and I'm flying to San Antonio, Texas to be a volunteer for the Teach Your Heart Out conference. So I will be doing a separate travel vlog about my experience and I can't wait to help out all the teachers that are responsible for making Teach Your Heart Out a success. All right, so that's all I have for you. I hope you enjoyed coming along. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought or any questions you may have. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell for notifications so you don't miss any future videos. I hope you have a beautiful, magical day, and don't forget to smile. Hello dreamers, wishers, and magical thinkers. Thank you so much for making it to the very end of this video and for showing your support. If you'd like to subscribe, you can do so by clicking on my picture down here. You can also check out my latest videos here and here. Don't forget to believe in the magic that's inside you because you are capable of great things. See you next time.